Peter von Sale is with us here in the Cape Town studio. He's the CEO recently appointed of ConvergeNet. Now, Peter, it's not the company we used to know. You, you talk about ConvergeNet. Those who do know it, it's a small cap, would think it's a, it's a tech company, IT company. But you've completely transformed. Yeah, I think, I think over the last two years we embarked on a strategy there of, of changing what the business is from a tech company, as everyone sort of knew it, to very much an investment holding company with a very different strategy. Why? Uh, I think, look, the, the business, uh, a number of shareholders uh, two, three years ago were, were getting frustrated with the progress that the tech company was making. Um, it wasn't really performing. Um, it embarked on some uh, sales of some of its assets, and I think it was suboptimum in terms of size, in terms of the technology space. Um, and the remaining assets really where the, the board got to was looking really for, for a perspective of not being operationally involved in some of its investments. And so the last chunk of, of investments were now as part of this transaction sold into, into a bigger tech company. And essentially we'll, we'll maintain a 30% stake in that company. That's the, the business called Telumat, which, which was spun out of uh, Plessy, uh, which was originally bought in the mid 90s by uh, Didata. Um, and that really is looking to partner, our strategy now is to partner with the operational expertise in a particular sector where we can add more corporatized, corporate finance, capital raising, drive an M&A strategy alongside management and maybe some other material shareholders in those companies. So but it's very different. If I no. had bought into your company as a tech company yes. and I was looking to the future and I now discover that you own a big chunk of Goliath gold, yes. I'm not so sure that I would have been uh, terribly happy to vote you back in Sure. Uh, onto the board, let alone as CEO. Yeah. What, so, what's the thinking there? Yeah, I think the thinking, we've, we've made a lot of announcements and communications with shareholders over the last 12 to 24 months about where the company was heading. So I think a lot of shareholders had an opportune time to exit the business if they didn't want to follow the new strategy. Um, we, we just found that our skill base was more around driving uh, acquisitive growth strategies, corporate finance strategies, uh, building businesses, in conjunction with management rather than being operational. But Goliath the Gold, if the gold price collapses, yes. you've got a big chunk of your equity tied up in a high risk asset. Well, I think it's just, it's just slightly more than 10% of our equity. So it's, it's, it's not massive in the scheme of things. So is it just a punt? It, it, for, for us, we, looking, we, we wanted to start with a platform. So, so in February now, we start with a platform. About 20% of our, of, of our equity is essentially exposed to the old ICT which is in a, te a bigger telemat business now with our remaining businesses in there. Um, about so a similar sort of size is exposed to Digicore, which is more of a technology play sort of business and seems to be improving over the last two years. I think there's still a way to go there, but, but is doing something interesting, hopefully. 10% um, in Digicore. We, we've got nearly 40% of our, our net value is actually in cash on day one. So we have the ability to look to new investments I mean, each of those investments we've engaged with other shareholders and with management about strat strategic issues. Well, what do you know about the gold market? Uh, we'd be very honest. We, we're not gold experts by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we, the other partners in Goliath are gold experts, and they together you know, represent the controlling shareholders in the business. Uh, we feel we can either go along with their strategies if we, if we like those so strategies. So are you picking entrepreneurs? Is this the, the whole idea? I think we're picking management. Management. we're picking management. We're also picking businesses where we feel we can add some value. Um, if we find over time that we, we can't do that, you know, they, then we'll look to exit those, those assets. So how, how, just in this instance, yeah. well, Digicor, how are yes. you adding value there? Well, I think we've now got to start adding the value. We've engaged with, obviously, the management. Uh, I think in Digicor, you would have seen that uh, three years ago, one of the founding uh, shareholders and CEO stepped down for a period of time. Uh, the business didn't do well. He's come back into the business over the last two years, and there seems to be a balance sheet cleanup, which has happened over the last two years. Uh, and hopefully an improvement in operations. Is that you Nick know, Flock you talk? That's about? Nick Flock. Yeah. And did he come to you and say we'd like you in our business? No, no. I mean, we we picked some of these assets. Uh, one of the biggest shareholders in in our business, a 28% shareholder, is Christo Visa, Dr. Visa, um, and obviously that was his historic stake in in Digicore. So we're looking to work with management um, and other shareholders in really defining what the next two to three years could look like in all of these companies. Peter, it's Google here in Johannesburg. Looking at your most recent results, it Hi. does seem as though uh, from a cash flow perspective, it has been quite challenging for you. From a financial position, are you looking to raise more capital in the market? In, in, in ConvergeNet? That's correct. 
Is, is, is that in convergence? Yeah. I, I think one must look. One must realise that the business has completely changed now. Um, the the historic a lot of the cleanup of the balance sheet and disposal of business. The historic. Uh, businesses which were held at what we would consider fairly high valuations has led to a lot of income statement damage in terms of re revaluing those assets on disposal. I think that's not a cash flow implication for us uh, in a business going forward. Uh, we start with, a, as I mentioned, 40% of our, uh, of our 550 or 600 million sitting in cash. So, so cash flow issues aren't really an well, issue for us. What's the net asset value now? It should on day on day one, in terms of all these transactions, should be around 560 to 570 million. So, so the market's valuing you pretty richly because you're already at 500 million market cap. So it's the, there's not much of a discount there. Investment trusts no. usually have a much bigger discount. No, sure. And I think there is a wait and see sort of attitude. Uh, my, our expectation is the few few months we'll see a flush out of those investors who don't want to follow the strategy and maybe want to follow a tech strategy and people who want to climb in maybe on the back of this sort of strategy. So You've got a lot of cash. Where, where are you looking? Uh, I, th I think it's opportunistically. We, we've, we've got a few smaller opportunities that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, we will deploy some of that cash. Uh, and then I think we, we need to hold a level of cash to follow some of the strategies we'd like to follow with the individual companies that may require cash. So we don't want to be in a position where, where we don't have the ability to follow a strategy. So who there. would want to invest in a company like yours? Why not go directly into, if you want Digicore, which is the one that... that well, well I, I think, look, you obviously get exposure in a Digicore is an obvious one where you can trade directly in the share. Uh, we're obviously hoping to partner with management and create something interesting there. The rest of the asset base are either less liquid assets or are private assets. Um, you know, over time we'll see whether we, we continue holding a big chunk of listed assets um, or not. But certainly it really is not about listed or unlisted. For us it's about, you know, is there an opportunity with the asset uh, to work with management and to define a change in strategy from what's been seen over the last three years. Goliath Gold is also one that you could invest in directly. Well, interesting, yeah. Peter Fonsell and ConvergeNet.